What's up guys, this is Biz from bsnooch.com Back again with another SMOD 101 map ad series video And today we're going to close out our second part On the basics of instant triggers added via map ad We're going to go over outputs uh, If you remember last week we covered um, sending inputs to stuff via the event entity well this time we're going to look at the other half of that equation which is uh, sending outputs very powerful we're going to look at how to do it from uh, instant triggers uh, what else are we going to do we're also going to um, validate some new map ad code make sure it works and then add it to the documentation I thought that would be fun so yeah um, let's get right into it So, where to start, where to start. Uh, so what we're going to do to kind of show you how this works is um, today we're going to spawn some combine up here on this catwalk. Uh, but we don't want them to fight with anything when they spawn, so we're going to... Uh, do some cool stuff. We're going to put them to sleep. And then when the player uh, starts, I don't know, maybe gets right here, we'll, we're going to place a trigger here in this area that's going to wake these enemies up and also make them start walking around so it looks natural. And that's going to be a good uh, demonstration of how we are going to, uh, of how outputs work from triggers. So. Let's first uh, go over into our map add code here. And um, we are going to get rid of the random spawn for now so stuff doesn't conflict. So an easy way to do that, let me blow this up a little bit for you guys, is you can actually do um, two, I think these are forward slashes. These are called comments. And uh, I don't know if I've covered these, but basically, <clears throat> anytime you put two forward slashes next to each other, it uh, to the game engine it actually invalidates the whole line. So when uh, when the game's reading your map ad file and it starts here and it goes, oh, okay, this is the pre-cache section. We are going to pre-cache uh, a model, models player, and then it comes down. And it's like, oh, here's the random spawn section we are going to randomly spawn and normally it would say metro police ten of them with a weapon smg1 etc etc but when you comment something out it gets to this line and it literally reads just like a person does left to right and it goes oh two slashes that's the end of the line nothing else to read there then it gets to this one nothing to read there so it's a good way to uh, uh, remove stuff from your map ad without deleting it like if something's not working and you want to go back and mess with it later uh, this is a good way to do it you can also use it to like make notes and maybe I should just show you how the, uh, show you how this works so let's just make a note uh, that we're going to randomly spawn 10 combine save our map ad file and I'm not even going to bother blowing this up because we're just going to um, and if we do the uh, command that shows all of uh, the entity names we'll do RS cops better spell that right uh, you see hey there's our cops right so they're still being randomly spawned and even though we just type some random stuff into our map ad file, you can see uh, when the engine gets to those two slashes, it just skips everything else on that one line. So on this one line here, line eight, it's skipping everything. Uh, now if we comment out the whole, let's just comment out this whole entity. And when you do this, you gotta make sure you get everything. So like from the start of the what type of entity it is to the closing brace 
all has to be commented out. Uh, now let's save it and restart. And we'll run that same command. And you can see now, no randomly spawned cops. So we've removed that whole thing. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I didn't mean to cover that, but I guess we did. Okay. So let's come over here and we are going to uh, just place, you know, oops, place a couple combine. Let's get rid of this guy. Let's say like one, two, I don't know, three of them. Oops. And I got my equipment. Let's uh, go ahead and grab these guys. One, two, three. Copy that map ad code. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and paste these right in the entity section. Boom, just like that. I'm not going to format, uh, format them too much. You guys know how it goes. Okay. Now, I'm not going to blow this up full screen, but let's watch what happens. Now, these are going to spawn when the map loads, right? Oops. Tossed away my crowbar. Oh, we didn't give them any weapons. But you can already tell they're like causing trouble. Alright, let's give him a weapon. Oops. Additional equipment, let's just do weapon pistol. I guess I'm going to format him on 2 OCD. Go ahead and do that. Okay, now they all have pistols. Now we're going to go ahead <clears throat> and actually look over here. I've got uh, the Combine S page pulled up. And there's a key value that will help us um, control when they actually are active. And that is right here. I don't know if you can see that, but it's called Sleep State. And uh, it's a key value. And it's got a bunch of numbers. Uh, a good one is number three so let's go back to our map add file and we'll add a new key value for each of these sleep state number three make sure you save it and now let's go take a look at our combine Now they should have spawned when the map loads, right? You're probably like, where are they? Well, guess what? Oops. They're actually here. They're just invisible and waiting for an input to wake them up. You see, I can actually kill them. So yeah, this is a good way to spawn enemies, but not have them become active until you want them to. So sleep state. Uh, number three is again waiting for input. So nothing's going to happen until you send them an, an input. So let's do that. Alright, so we got our Metro Police here. <clears throat> Now, another thing that instant triggers are good for is they don't just have to spawn a brand new group. Let's restart the game. We
we can actually use them to send inputs to uh, other entities. So let's come down here. We're going to do a couple uh, neat things here. I'm going to kind of show you guys a few things. So there's the barn. Here's about where the player can start seeing it. Let's go ahead and uh, we're going to place a trigger here. But we need to uh, figure a couple things out. First off, <clears throat> if you had to guess, how wide is this little corridor here between these two walls? Well, the good news is you don't actually have to guess. We can use the old impulse 90 command once and then turn around and face this wall, do it again. And uh, if you guys remember, the trace is wherever your crosshair is pointing, whatever surface it takes the origin. So uh, if you look up in the top right corner here, remember we have uh, the numbers X, Y, and Z for our position. And you can see that this is eh, it's kind of the Y is the one that changes when we move between these two walls. So let's go ahead. Oops, I had that on the screen cap. <laughs> okay, it don't matter. Let's go ahead and um, pull out our handy calculator here. And we've got two trace positions. One is uh, 9216. And the other one down here for the other wall is 8960. So let's minus 8960. And that means the distance between the two ends is exactly 256 units. So let's go ahead and do our instant trigger. All right, so punch it in. New data section. <clears throat> We're going to need an origin, but we don't have one yet. And now let's do our key values. New data section, of course. And we already have our radius figured out. It's 256 units wide. For the label, we're going to do, uh, we're not actually gonna call a label, so let's just do null. I mean, you can put anything in here. You can put, uh, I got a better one. Not a label. And as long as you don't have a labeled group called not a label, then uh, it's not gonna spawn anything extra but it's still going to work as an instant trigger. When you hit it, it's going to do something. So let's get our origin. Uh, shoot. Okay, let's say right about here. This video's getting long. Okay, whenever you guys do um, the Impulse 90 uh, for a trigger, you always want to crouch and take the eye position always 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 crouch it for some reason it just works better uh, trust me from experience make sure you crouch we'll do our impulse 90 and so you can see here boom there it is you gotta kinda be quick when you do that <clears throat> I actually uh, have it bound to a key which makes it very easy because you can't when you're ducking you can't hit the escape key so it's always good to just bind it to a key and then you have it so there's our origin for our trigger Oops. yep very good <clears throat> okay so let's test it test 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 Okay, now since we have the uh, remember that command developer mode is on set to one in the top right hand or top left hand corner of the screen when we hit the trigger. Ooh, we didn't get it. Where are you? Oh, you know why? Cause I forgot to save. Make sure you save. 
All right, let's try it again. Top left-hand corner where we hit the trigger. <clears throat> the map pad system will give us a little developer message. Boom, right there. Hit trigger, not a label. So now we know it's working perfect. It's time to send our output. The last little piece. <clears throat> so every entity has a, a whole nother set of key values you can send. And uh, again, we're here on the Valve Developer page for Combine S. Remember when we covered inputs? Well, there's another one called outputs. And these are key values that you can actually, that are used to send inputs to other entities when something happens. So for example, the Combine, um, when it's damaged, so it's got a, a key called on damaged you can actually send an input to another entity like when this NPC gets damaged and there's a whole long list of them they're very useful but today we're looking at uh, instant triggers and there's only one that works here and it's a special one that the author made is called on hit oops, <laughs> on hit trigger and of course what this means is that um, when you touch the trigger or whatever entity that activates the trigger touches it normally it's the player by default in S mod it's going to uh, fire an input out or an event you know so let me just show you the way this works so we have our output that's the key right and then we have a value and it's kind of, this is a long value so the value actually looks like this target name input or action if you think back to um, our event uh, what else value delay time perfect and the last one I'm not sure how to describe this but it's like fire once is what it's called so again uh, I know this is gonna look confusing but fear not the easiest way to think about this is we have a key and a value key value key value key and then this whole long thing is a value okay and this works on any entity but uh, today we're just going to be looking at something specific to the instant trigger so let's do it our output is on hit trigger meaning that when we hit the trigger we're going to send out this long value <clears throat> so we have to have a target name now we didn't uh, and of course the target name is like remember when we named our barrels berry so we could light them on fire we didn't give our guys a target name so let's do that let's name our three metro cops we'll name them test it's probably a good one test 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 so now they're all going to be named test so when we hit the trigger let's tell test that we want now we need a, a an input or if you go back down to the event here remember the action so let's tell test that we want it to let's go look at our inputs input ah here it is wake we want to wake up the NPC if it's sleeping, and it is most definitely sleeping. Remember, sleep state. So we want to tell test that we want it to wake up. Now we don't need to send a value here, so you can actually just leave that blank, or you can pass zero if you want to. But make sure you got your commas, or else it's going to screw the whole thing up. We want to do a delay time of zero seconds, and fire once. <coughs> Uh, what this means is this is an integer so a number uh, anywhere from 1 
to as many as you want and also negative one there's no zero that goes here what this means is like let's say we had a trigger here that didn't disappear when we touch it uh, if we only wanted to wake up the combine once we do it one time if we had like I don't know two waves of combine and we wanted to make sure that if the player touches this trigger twice we want to send out this input twice you do two if you want to make sure anytime this trigger gets touched and activated you always want to send out this output you do negative one negative one means always and then every other number means uh, fire this once it's confusing just put negative one for now on the triggers uh, and that'll make sure everything works good so again output our target test our action or input that we're going to send to them wake value we got none we want a zero second delay and we want to make sure uh, we're doing this one time and you know what I'm actually gonna leave this little thing here output target name uh, action value delay time fire once I don't think this will hurt anything and in fact we can just go ahead and comment it out <laughs> oh man it's a 20 minute video okay let's show you how this works well oh boy Oops. We're having some technical difficulties on the back end. Okay, here we go. Alright, let's get out of here. So remember, we spawned our test guys. Remember our three guys named Test? There they are. Let's go ahead and get rid of this idiot. But they're asleep. And now check it out. We have our trigger right here. And we've hit it. And take a look. It actually woke them up because we sent them a wake input. Now, let's go back. I promise that we do one more. So let's find our trigger and just add another key value. This is going to be another output. So when we hit the trigger, we're going to tell test to start patrolling. Don't need to send a value, so leave it blank. We want a, let's say, a one second delay. And we want it to fire always when you hit this trigger. So boom, again, another output and let's see if they really start patrolling uh, there they are now we spawn them oh they gotta kill the g-man of course okay he's dead i don't know if they're gonna patrol Let's try that one more time. We're running out of time. We're going to have to do the map add validation code at a later date. I did it again. Unbelievable. Alright, let's try this again. Let's come over here, hit our labeled group. <laughs> there they go. Thank God. I was getting nervous. Check it out. You can see them patrolling in the distance. Perfect. Alright. 
so you know what let's go ahead we'll just do it anyways so uh, I've been kind of lazy I haven't verified this to add it to the documentation but a user uh, on the discord by the name of general Ek or something like that uh, he found something interesting so we're gonna validate it to add to the documentation so remember how in this map we have our two uh, groups that spawn at the top of the ladder uh, one of them was the zombie spawn and then we did the cool barrel trap at the bottom well apparently <clears throat> in the in your instant trigger remember this one is the one that spawns our barrel trap you can actually make it randomly pick between a couple different labeled groups and the way you do that is essentially in the label key value you just put in so again we have our barrel trap one right and you just put a colon after it and you can go ahead and grab another labeled group our zombie spawn one and if you put it right after that check it out let's see if this works save it and now when you whenever you hit that trigger at the top of the ladder it's supposed to uh, randomly pick between one or the other one so let's see we've hit our uh, trigger and we got barrel trap very cool and of course there's our barrels and now they're on fire let's restart do it again climb up to the top of the ladder and ha ah, nice check it out zombie spawn very cool so that works so that's kind of a neat thing I will go ahead and add that to the map add documentation so yeah that's gonna cover it sorry guys this was such a long video a lot to go over now you have a basic 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 understanding of inputs and outputs we've covered uh, well shoot pretty much everything in the um, in the instant trigger and uh, yeah I hope you guys enjoyed the video uh, stick around next time I'm not sure exactly what we're gonna cover but we got a few more little basic entities and then uh, we'll probably be done with the basic scores so yeah see you guys in the next video